Hello, welcome back to another little material lesson here for Unreal 4. Uh, today we're going to be talking about refraction. So, just create a little kind of swimming pool level. Create a new material. Refraction. And assign it to this plane. So, first thing we want to do with a refractive material, it needs to be translucent. Now we can have access to the refraction panel here, or the refraction input pin. And we're going to have an opacity parameter and refraction so I'm going to set the default for the refraction <coughs> just to apply this and see what we can see uh, give it a sec to compile what we can see is nothing, nothing's happening uh, why is that? well what are we talking about when we talk about refraction if I bring up the documentation not that one, here we are uh, if we imagine a pencil in water this is the thing we all did at primary school. Uh, refraction happens because the light is moving at different speeds through the different transparent mediums. So the light here in the air is moving at one speed, and then the light here in the water is moving at a different speed. Those different speeds make that kind of bending appear to happen. Um, so, seconds. Uh, a value of 1, the refractive input, or the refractive index we're putting in here, it's uh, a sort of a scale of how does it compare against air. Most of the time we're just looking at things through air. Um, so a value of 1 is saying the density of this material is the same as air, so there's no refraction happening. So if I go and put in a larger value, there we are, we're getting some refraction now, and that's saying this object is denser than air. I scale that back the other way. Values between 0 and 1 are going to refract the other way. <coughs> so that's saying this is less dense than air. This doesn't happen very often. but Objects denser than air, water, glass, um, and you can look up the values of index of reflection or IOR. Um, they're pretty well documented. I think Epic has some websites. There they are. In fact, water 1.33, ice 1.31, 1.52, diamond, whatever it is that you're making. So, um, so yes, yeah, so that's the value of refraction. That's what that does. Um, one thing you will notice. If I don't have any refraction plugged in, my normal pin is grayed out. As soon as I plug that refraction in, suddenly I can plug in a normal map. If I do a water normal here, this is going to make a huge impact on how that refraction affects things. Um, getting much more of these wavy things. So it's using the normal information. Even though we've got zero opacity, we're not rendering any pixels here, we're just doing this as a, a refractive effect. Um, that normal map's having a huge impact on the, uh, was it 133, on the uh, the refraction that we're seeing. And obviously we could take our normal map, put a panel on it or something, and scroll that along, however it is we want to build our, our water shader up. Um, give us a nice result. Uh, there we are. Nice. There's a few errors still. Up here, what's happening? Well, it's refracting. What it's doing is it's bending the pixels off screen. While well, the pixels from up here, it's not necessarily very good looking. Um, so, since 4.14, I believe, they've added this new si system uh, in Unreal called Refraction Using Pixel Normal Offset. So, you can have a look at the documentation here. Um, that's what we're seeing now. That's using the, the index of refraction node. Um, and if we scroll this across, you can see this is much nicer. We're getting this distortion, but it's only distorting it in the surface. So this index of refraction node mode, um, this works nicely for so things like glass or small objects. When you're dealing with large bodies of water, like swimming pools, um, there's a, a different approach. It's not physically accurate. You get a much nicer, nicer uh, visual result. So settings for that are down here in refraction. If I change that to pixel normal offset. What it's actually doing, it's comparing the pixel normal from the, ver the normal map to the vertex normal, and when one is slightly different, it's doing a bit of distortion. Um, no longer physically accurate, So, but we're, what we're seeing is all those errors where we're ha refracting the sky down, been picked up, just getting a little bit of surface distortion. So a really nice uh, result uh, for that. Um, couple of errors still. I bring an object in front of my 
surface. A bit difficult to see, but sometimes you see areas around an object that's in front of your refracted plane. There you are, where there's not much refraction happening. It's 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 sort of clearing it off. Um, so it's basically it can't cope with this object in front. Um, not ideal. We change it back to the classic index of refraction mode. This is going to happen even worse. Um, yeah, you can see a huge kind of circle uh, where this sphere is being, the pixels behind are being kind of trying to be drawn, but there's no refraction information there. Um, we can kind of work around it. Uh, that we can manually set up our own distortion shader. Um, but it has its own limitations, so let's do that now uh, and see what, how that works. So we're going to just create a new material, call it fake refraction, like it's spell refraction. I'm just going to assign this to my plane, and it's going to be a translucent shader again. We're going to use a thing called scene color. So if I plug this into the emissive, make this an unlit material. If I don't make it translucent, it's going to give me an error saying only translucent materials is the scene color node. Well, if I apply this, what's this actually doing? Well, what it's going to do is it's going to take all of those opaque pixels behind my plane and then render them on the plane. So effectively making it invisible. The scene color node has input data, has UVs, so it's looking for some UV input, and the UVs it's using are the screen position UVs. Oops, screen position, there it is. If I just preview those, there. Yeah, if I zoom in on this, it covers the whole screen. This is the screen mapped, or the UVs of the screen mapped on the on the plane. So the top right corner, no, nope, top left corner. Black, black, bottom right, white, white. So we've got that green, black to white gradient in red, top to bottom, black to white radiant again, left to right, getting our UV coordinates. So anytime we have UV coordinates, we can use them, a bit of noise, to create some distortion, can't we? So here, if I do this, this is exactly what we had without that input. This is the default anyway. There it is. In here, I could take that normal map, let's say texture sample, water normal. I just multiply by a very small amount. We don't want to be adding too much uh, to our UVs. Remember the UVs, the range here is 0 to 1, the range here is 1 to minus 1. So we're adding a, a very small amount. Uh, and we only want to mask out red and green. Again, UVs are just two channels of data. This. I'm adding no distortion. I just take that to a little amount. You can see it's taking those pixels that are being rendered underneath, then distorting them by a normal map, and we can make that move as well. It's going to have got rid of that haloing effect getting before. Um, but instead it takes that object that's in front and distorts it. So now it's assuming that, that object is actually being distorted by the water, which isn't right either. So it's not a great solution, but it does give us a different way of getting around that uh, and manually controlling our, our di distortion this way. Um, the other thing you'll notice there is a translucent sphere here. This has got a glass shader on it. So because the scene color node is only picking up the opaque pixels, anything that's translucent, whether it's in front or behind, is going to be completely uh, masked out by that. So different set of limitations, possibly worse, but possibly better. Um, if I just swap the fake refraction, the real refraction, see a different error here. The pixel Normal offset does seem to do a better job of it. Swap that one. Get a little bit of haloing too much. So there we are. There's the different types of refraction. Uh, either doing it manually ourselves, um, using the scene color, 
the various limitations that come with that, so objects in front of it distorting, the edge pixels are distorting a little as well, and obviously no translucent objects, or using the refraction, but get this sort of static haloing around objects. Um, yeah, hope that's helpful. Hope you uh, learnt maybe a couple of new nodes or a bit more how understanding of how refraction works. And uh, as always, any questions, send me an email, um, and I'll see you next time for another Unreal little tutorial.